What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Empire Game Channel. I'm AJ Gales. Guys, we are uh, back with Song of the Deep. Alrighty then. Strange mechanical turtles toiled inside the giant machine. Were they operating it? Or were they trapped inside, just like her? Scaring a turtle into its shell appeared to cause the beams of that color to shut off. Then. I'm trying to think ex where we are. I think we're at this, uh, I'm trying to think what this place is called. Um, I think it's like the architect or something like that. Though she hated to leave the safety of the submarine in such a hostile environment, she needed its weight at the sensor to keep the beams turned off. All right, I get it. Marin felt sorry for having to scare the turtles, but it was the only way to help them escape from the machine. As Marin entered the innermost room of the architect, a large red turtle activated an alarm. Suddenly, the insides of the machine began to move and change shape around her. Whoa. So I'm assuming... I, I totally lost my train of thought. The turtles hiding in their shells could now be moved safely around. Marin was careful not to hurt them. After all, this was for their benefit, as well as her own. Some of the beams were controlled by sensors. But would any large object trigger the sensor? Hmm. Can't get out that way. Can't double back. All right, that answers that question.
trying to find the sensor that apparently is being blocked. Get through there. What the shit. Yeah, there's no other sensor to hit. Oh my god, I'm a moron. Changing everything again. Okay. Oh boy, more light puzzles. trick him into taking a more dangerous path. sent the turtle back into his shell. But a piece had broken away. Marin recognized it as a Fomori sonar device. Oh, cool! of pure sonic energy, shaking the architect and scattering broken glass in all directions. 
This new power might be Merrin's one opportunity to escape. Wow, that drains the energy. As the last piece of the great Fomori machine collapsed, Merrin heard the sounds of distant turbines. The current that had pulled her in was now reversed, pushing her back out into the sea and toward her father's boat. Enormous red tentacles grabbed her submarine, cracking its hull and crushing its propeller. The unseen beast pulled her down into the darkest depths and left her at the bottom of a deep, rocky trench. Her submarine broken, Marin sat helplessly at the bottom of the sea. She opened her father's journal. On the last page, he had written a note to her. Her hands trembled as she read it. My dearest Marin, I now realize I may never see you again, and I feel that I have failed you. I'm sorry for all the times you went hungry. I'm sorry I could not buy you pretty dresses and paints and books of your own. I wish I could have given you a happier life. Please know that I love you more than all the world. Merrin put down the journal and her eyes blurred with tears. She didn't want pretty dresses or paints. She had a happy life and she just wanted it back. For the first time since her journey began, Merrin had lost hope. She felt the slow, dull realization that her father was truly gone. She watched as the water seeped in through the cracks in the submarine's hull. She could no longer will herself to go on. As the cold water slowly rose up around her, there was a tapping sound from above and the hatch creaked open. It was Swish. He gently picked Merrin up and pulled her out of the trench. He carried her out of the Forbidden City through caverns and caves she had never seen until they reached a place so beautiful that Merrin was certain she must be dreaming. to an undersea garden of a thousand colors. Beautiful corals of every hue stretched out like blooming summer flowers. Dazzling schools of fish swooped up and down all around her. Merrin had never imagined a place like this could exist below the waves. What she didn't know was that the whole sea was once covered with these gardens and that this was the last one of them all. Don't go that way. Try the 
this again. A cluster of brilliant red marrow eggs shimmered like giant rubies. If the sea garden could be saved, the marrows might still live on. Music is just beautiful. Follow me. Wait, no, this will take me back up. Come on. Marin was shocked to see her submarine repaired and waiting for her. Did you do this? She asked the hermit crab. And for a moment, she thought he was blushing beneath his shell. Speed so on. As Merrin swam toward Kara, she felt a wave of panic. The Mero was dying. Merrin asked her desperately, What can I do? How can I help? Kara's voice was slow and weak. Fix him. Fix him, and he will show you, she said. Kara closed her eyes. She didn't have the strength to say more. sick. But Swish was there to care for her. He would fetch scallops for her to eat and guard her from any enemies. Merrin knew the best way she could help was to find a way to repair the clockwork seahorse. Okay, so I need to go in a bunch of different places. visions flashed through her mind. Each one showed a different location in the world. She marked them on her map, wondering what she might find there. Are 
Oh, you're kidding me. That was the checkpoint. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to end this video. I know this is uh, pretty short. Um, something just kind of came up. I got to go take care of something real quick. Um, so I'll pick it up uh, after all that cutscene and after all that stuff that we, uh, we just saw. Uh, so guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or my website down in the description below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if uh, you enjoyed this. You want to see more, all that stuff. So guys, until next time, I'm AJ Gels. This is the Umthar Gaming Channel. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm out.